A senior U.S. defense official warns Russian forces are increasing bombardments of major Ukrainian cities. I want you to take a look at this video. It is of heavy shelling in the city of Irpin, homes on fire, residents trying to escape the bombs. So joining me now, Colonel John Spencer. He's a chair of Urban Warfare Studies at Madison Policy Forum. We've been having him on. We, we, I love having you on. I learn a, a lot from you every time you're on. Thank you so much for joining, Colonel. Um, these new videos... This video shows the horror of this war, a residential apartment building up in flames. This is what's left of a school in the northern city of Cher Cherniv. That was weeks ago. It was full of students. And then I want you to look at what happened to the church in a small town outside of Kiev. Are we seeing a new phase in this war? I think we're seeing the transition, Don, really from what I would consider phase one to phase two. And, and, and uh, the ICC is already going to investigate all these strikes, and hopefully uh, they, they say these are war crimes. Those are protected sites. Now, he's going to claim that these are enemy locations, and this is really phase one of bombing, right? Any enemy location, he'll bomb. He'll say that somebody they had a weapon, but that, that doesn't abstain him from the, the law of war requirement to protect civilians. Do everything. There are all kinds of things that can be done to get civilians out of there. Unfortunately, I think that this is only the tip of the iceberg. I mean, remember, this is not a war. This is an operation, a large-scale combat operation to take Kiev. And all we're seeing are the, the supporting operations. This is going to get way uglier. Hmm. I, I just want to warn that the, this video that you're about to see is very difficult to watch. This is a Russian strike hitting an evacuation route in a suburb of Kiev. Watch this. <laughs> I mean, that's so fast, Colonel. You, there's no way to get a, away from that. It happens in seconds, if a second. Multiple people were killed, including a mother and her two children, seen in this horrific video. How can Ukrainians hold on to their cities with this kind of attack? One, it, um, we as the international community have to demand that the civilians flee. Uh, the civilians are allowed to get out. You could see there, there was somebody with a weapon. He's going to claim, but that's the whole point of why we don't want, why militaries don't want to fight in urban areas because of the location to civilians and the, and the restrictions of the use of force. Clearly, Russia is flying loose with those restric restrictions of force. Uh, the way that the Ukrainians survive this, number one, is prepare for the next phase. Th this is going to get worse. And luckily, there was some ceasefires. But just to be clear, Don, if, if we empty all these cities out of civilians, which is a very common urban warfare tactic when you want a city, Give it time to empty of its civilians. And then the fire you can bring down because your restrictions are a lot less. The international criticism is not. I mean, look at the Battle of Grozny, which is Russian, which is only a city of two, 20, uh, 270,000. It was a small city. Only had 2,000 2, fighters in it. They started off by bombing 3,000 rounds of artillery a day. That got up to 30,000 rounds a day. That's around yeah. every, half, every 30 seconds for 24 hours. Wow. Uh, look, I, this is some more video that I want you to take a look at. It shows Ukrainian police taking out Russian tanks. Their resistance is incredible, but you say Ukraine doesn't have to win militarily. They just have to buy time. And how do they do that then? So they do that. So th this is really a, a chess game. We know what they need to take Kiev. We know they need armor. They need tanks. Uh, they need mechanized infantry. They need artillery. And, and we're just, the Ukrainians are just picking them apart as they try to get to where they're going. And, and that's great. I, I, in that video, I wish they would be from a more concealed location. But you, no smart army person, no smart military person goes into a fight like Kiev's going to be without armor. So how do you prevent them from doing that? It's these thousands and thousands of, that's an RPG, but a javelin's a much lethal, more lethal tank killer. Take away all their tanks, and, and I'm telling you, Ukraine can survive. And they also have to get underground. I put out a tweet about the underground network in Kyiv. It's crazy. 
if if they can get underground, survive the bombardments that are going to come, it, they have a real. And you know, I keep saying this because I have hope, um, and I know the defenders have the advantage. Russia is demoralized, and that would be even if they were the best army in the world, and they are far from it. Because of the time they've given Kiev to prepare the defense, and we see them doing it. And like you said, every day that we have a talk, Ukraine is winning. They're preparing to turn Kiev into a meat grinder. They have reached the gates. There is a force at the gates of Kiev. Hopefully, it'll be the gates of fire when they try to actually go in. But they're going to start hitting it. And I mean, beyond what I think anybody is really expecting, um, especially if he can get the civilians out. So it's almost at his advantage to get the civilians out. And I'm talking World War II, thousands of rounds a day. And they have to get, to, for me, get to places where they can survive that and to be ready to fight. Colonel Spencer, thank you. We'll see you soon. Thank you.